All right, so welcome YouTube. to Let's the again. first ever episode one of Backyard Session with APG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so let's start off with, um, yeah, where did it all begin to you musically? Like, where was, the, where was the start? I think my formative years, one of my formative years in the, in the, the music industry, but musically, my formative years would have been singing in the choir i know it's cliche but i in school and church choir i sang um i i played played the violin i don't play it anymore but i played the violin for quite some time um i've always been a, a lover of sound i've always loved the way sounds come together um whether it being class playing with the pencils with my my, my boys or uh I mean, I first hopped on FL Studio, you know what I mean? And it's, it's no longer playing with sticks and stones, oh, yeah, yeah. you feel me? So, yeah, I feel like that's where my my love for music came from. It just came from natural sounds. The sound of this this thing here, like if you, I don't know, the way this thing sounds, mm. percussion, it's just, you know? That's but yeah. Cool. Yeah, and what's the journey been like so far since you started as well? What's been like the biggest highlights for you? The biggest highlight is like being shown that anything's possible all the time. Like mm. not only by my peers who I respect and love so much, but just meeting new people and realizing that you think you know a way, but there's someone who didn't go your way at all. And not that it's because they're further than you, but they just okay. You know what I mean? It's like it's one thing when when people get envious and it's like, yeah, my peers are doing better than me and shit. Mm. But it's different when you realize that that's just God's way of showing you there's another way. Like mm. always keep. I, I I learn to always keep an open mind. Always keep an open mind. You never know who you're dealing with. Like don't let in this industry. Don't let it. Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't do that. Mm. Just don't do that. That's why it's a martial thing. Um, so, what does music mean to you, and what has it done to you that people really haven't really seen, you know, behind the scenes? What What does music mean to you, and what has it done to you? It's helped me feed my family. Um, it's helped me sustain certain things in my life. Um, it's given me freedom, freedom to express myself. Um, it's also very stimulating like hopping on the mic just like takes my mind away from a lot of things and I'm just in the moment for the first time you know what I mean yeah I'll say that's that's more or less more. Yeah, just I gave you like three answers fuck yeah but I mean also just being like an outside in watching you create as well you take you take you are very methodical and very technical as well like you always you know repeating like the melodies as well making sure that like just the tiniest thing yeah. you know sounds right so I, I can definitely vouch for that that it's like a it's like a science bro yeah for real. Like science, bro. for real um so yeah so creating the music how do you get in that 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 god flow as you say how do you get in that you know that zone or does it just you know is it like a spur of the moment thing where that happens for you or do you have to get in that you know space and mindset to so you said it again? How do you get in that God flow? What's the process when you're creating as well? What's a God flow? God flow is when you're in that like, when you're in that, you don't think about it, it just happens and you just, you, it just takes you while you create. Nah, that nigga over there, that, that nigga hops into God flow, you feel me? Mm. I, I, don't, I don't know what God flow is. I know that I like to, I like to get inspired by a beat immediately and if a beat inspires me immediately the words will just flow but when things kind of feel forced my mind kind of goes into like a a self distract it's like mm. i don't actually want to do this anymore yeah. you know what i mean because i know how joyful i can feel during the process mm. but that but that's despite the point this is also a business so that's not good enough you need to put in the work you need to make the music but sometimes like my best music isn't made with all of that technicality. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? The best music's made like by accident, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it feels like it's by accident because it came naturally. Yeah. That's why I say by accident, not because it's by accident. Mm -hmm. But yeah. That's fire, bro. And then, um, yeah, what sounds, genres, and artists did you go up to like on the radio? And like, did those artists influence you or shape your sound that you have now? 
to some old heads, bro, that I used to listen to growing up because of my mom. But I, I, my bad, I can't name them right now. But, um... Uh, when you say old school, like 90s? 70s? Yeah, yeah, 70s, 80s. Okay. Like, um, I think it's Bobby Brown. Is that, is that, is that, is that someone's name? Mm, Bobby Brown, yeah. There's more people. There's more people, bro. I just, man, I'm, I'm a millennial, man. I'm, mm. <laughs> I, I, I used to listen to that shit, but like, I didn't really stay like with that. But I would say maybe like Tory Lanez. I really fuck with that nigga's way of like, just anticipating and executing on anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just, but it's, it's different. Like, it's okay to execute on everything, but when you put you, you when you execute you on anything, you know what I mean? When it's, it's indistinguishable that yeah. it's you, you know what I mean? Like, no one can imitate that type shit. Mm. Yeah. Ah, really, bro. I'll say Tory Lanez, man. He's, he's really dope. And genres as well? Young Ma. So fuck with Young Ma. Young Ma's hard. Hey, she's fire, bro. Recently got a liking to CEO Trail. That nigga also hard. You feel okay, me? Shout out, shout but these, out. these are these people that like these days I'm less inspired by artists and I'm more happy for them. You know what I mean? So when I see you doing wild, well, it's like yo, that's so dope. You know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, good yeah. for you. But it doesn't inspire me because I know, like I said in the first question, this journey, you can't judge a book by its cover. So I can't really even the, the way that people rap, people rap differently, people have different. So even if I try to have them inspire me, I will still sound different. Because yeah. I'm not trying to sound like anybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And if I ever do, like, I probably don't like that song. Yeah. Like, to be honest, I probably won't take that song serious. So. Mm -hmm. You just got a lot of self love, man. You just like whatever, you know. It comes from the heart, basically. Yeah, it needs to come from the heart, fam. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, also, like, I remember when I used to look up to niggas, like, when I when I used to, like, first started off and I was, like, trapping. I was, like, a trapper. And, like, bro, I would, like... Bro, I would, like... I would, like, unconsciously steal flows, like... Mm. You know what I mean? So, like, I would do a, a flow of, like, somebody not actually realizing it because I've been listening to that shit so often. Mm. Then I, I, I play the song back, I'm like, oh shit, actually. It sounds like There was one song my friend Amina Roni he really liked. Um, it was called Dreaming or Dreams. I was featuring Jordan Baker. Mm. And I went, uh, you so fucking sexy when you lie. You feel me? I said lie. Yeah. But then there's a song, I didn't even realize it at the time, but there's a song that goes, you so fucking sexy yeah, when you smile. Happen, you feel me? Yeah. So like shit like that used to happen, bro. But yeah. So just on that, like how can an artist find a voice? Like, how, like you know, you found your voice. Just stay in studio, man. Stay in, studio, stay in studio, bro. Like at least lock in like five days straight. Like just do that. Like lock in five days straight and see what what sounds you put on each track correlate the most so whatever sounds similar to the next thing try and kind of work around that mm. hi how are you good to see you oh yeah, oh yeah. and then um where do you see yourself in the next five years in the industry like filling up stadiums touring like what's the what's the plan bro i told myself for 2024 not that I'm not gonna have a five-year plan, which I do have, but specifically with music, I'm taking it week by week. So I'm doing whatever I can each week to achieve something. Mm. So it's less about the money and the and the clout and all of that. For me now, it's just about creating my own platforms, mm. putting my putting myself on my own stages, yeah. having my own events, having my own merchandise. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the full the full entourage. Mm. You know what I mean? Of being a, a, a an artist like there's ways we can make money if we're smart about it mm. you know what i mean and then we can reinvest yeah. so in the next five years i see myself doing what i'm gonna do this year amplified mm. so it's gonna be time oh, that's, that's exciting shit, bro. yeah that's exciting man. and then yeah final question what advice i think i really gave advice to artists you know how to be successful but what are the red flags to watch out in this industry that you know, that artists have to like avoid or just be careful of when you want to be a success in this industry? Yeah. Get a manager that values you. Mm. Make sure you have a manager that 
has your best interest at heart at all times. Um, even sometimes above their own. I feel like a manager should make that sacrifice sometimes. Um, I think... Try and work on quantity over quality if you don't have the finances. Mm. So don't really bother yourself that your peer has better quality content. Out push him, you know what I mean? Like, mm. have more content than he has, you know what I mean? Just like, it's not, it's, this is sport, you know what I mean? So it's not about hatred or envy or jealousy. It's just about knowing that if you can't provide the same quality, that is quantity in the essence. So the more quality you have, the more quantity, you feel me? But if you can have less quality but more content, I think it can still be beneficial. And I think in the age we're living in now, that's where we're headed. Where people don't even want to see your music video anymore. They want to see five promo videos. They want to see in different formats. They want to see performance videos. They want to see... They want to see you hopping on streams. You know what I mean? Like people, yeah. people are going in a different direction, and it's gonna take years before what I'm saying now actually like hits. But it's not always about, especially in the beginning. I'm talking about for artists in the beginning. It's not always about making yourself look super established. You need to look like you're coming up. People want to see a journey. Mm. So never neglect your journey. Biggest red flag is when someone tries to take away your journey. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, that's that's perfect. Yo, appreciate you coming out. Yes, sir. Showing us nah, a little respect, bit about the DG. Bro. Appreciate you and, too, my uh, nigga. We definitely gonna have you back for another performance. For bro, sure. Buddy, uh, appreciate you coming through, my guy. Oh. Cool.